Virginity for sale. That, Janet, I have to say, is a first for me. We've done lots of things on this show. Mm. Uh, I've heard the sugar daddy thing and mm. girls funding their way through uni, but selling your virginity... No, I've heard stories like that before. They have been around on the internet before. But it got me thinking about the first time, I mean, when I lost my virginity, it was a bit like... <laughs> it wasn't romantic. It was just a transaction. Two shillings. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is getting a bus pass or a senior roll card. <laughs> I mean, it's just something you've got to go through. And from the age of 15, I was just determined to lose my virginity as quickly as possible so I could get on to real life. And so you literally saw it as so like, tick the box, I need to get that box, done and out the get way. on with it. Yeah. Anyway, I chose a bloke because he had more leather jackets and, look, you know, better-looking bloke, uh, was the best-looking bloke in this club that I used to go to. And... Um, I took his phone number, rang him up, went over there on the bus on the Saturday <laughs> afternoon, did the deed, got the bus back home. Was there at any point of that scenario there was a point to the scenario, where you were maybe feeling a bit romantic at all? Well, it was nice. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend it wasn't really, yeah. really nice, but it is the first time, it's a bit of a squidge, and then it's over. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, an orchestra didn't come out of the cupboard and suddenly <laughs> play. Well, you see, that's interesting you say that, because I think we were sold that, you know, when I was yes, young. Yes, when you were little, This image, kind of films and books and things, and it was all like, you know, violins are going to play well, and white doves are going to... Well, there were all those romantic films, well, weren't they, when yeah. people kissed and, you know, there were harps playing and kind of, you know, it was yes, all fabulous. Yes, it went soft focus. But the first time you do it... And physically, it can be quite painful, mm. and also you're a bit anxious about where do I go and what you know how. What how bit it, goes where? What bit goes <laughs> where? And then you know, after you've done it a few times, obviously you get better at it, and practice doesn't make perfect. It definitely becomes more enjoyable. But the first time, I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> so was your... <laughs> please tell, please tell me there was just like a little bit of romance with yours. Uh, mine was fabulous. Oh. <laughs> It's probably because I did grow up watching all those romantic movies mm. and I was madly in love with the guy I was with at the time and, you know, there weren't violins there but there were in, in my head, I could hear them. The Nolans and were it the was... <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone's going to put you off your stride, that... <laughs> No, but it was, it was lovely, we were madly in love and I always remember it with just such great memories and great fondness and I think because your first time is the one time you all you never forget your first time good or bad and I think for me it's nice to look back and go do you know what it yeah. was it was fabulous it was everything I wanted it to be and everything I hoped it would be which is which is but really stay nice together, for you. But never no mind. you didn't stay together but you've got lovely memories and yeah but it's it, really the thing is lovely. It's, you know, you can't say to everybody, it should be really special your first time. I suppose with daughters that you two have got, mm. you hope it will be, but you can't really put that on them to tell them what it should be like, because it might not be like that. Well, it's, like any, it's like any other experience in life. You don't want to project what your dream is onto your yeah. child, because if they don't get that perfect idea, what kind of what sense of failure are they going to have? Yeah. So you just hope that you've brought them up to recognise a good person and a person that would care about them, and, you know, you hope for the best. Best. But why um, should the first but... person that you have sex with <coughs> be a person with whom you're going to have a relationship subsequently? That's all I ask. I mean, I do admit that my attitude to sex and my attitude to, you know, particularly things like this, losing a virginity, is more masculine than feminine, and definitely I just look on it as, like, you know, it's that, Well, you do. Sex. It always strikes me that, actually. Whenever you talk about sex, I always, if I could just close my eyes, I would think it was a man talking, not a woman talking. You but definitely... there are women like me. Yeah, no, I'm no, not no, like no, one I... in a million. <laughs> no, 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 women out there who think like oh, me. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And I think that... But I often wonder, cos also knowing a lot about your childhood and the way that... and your relationship with your mum and dad, when I hear you talk about sex, I wonder if that's a bit because it sounds, correct me if I'm wrong, that your childhood was very suppressed. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, I've got to get out and I've got to do that. I mean, you're a fighter. You're like, you want to experience everything in life. And so, so the, the fact that it became meticulist rather than mm. something that might have... And, and would also set the tenor for the rest of your sexual life, I would imagine. I don't but know. I, yeah, I've never placed any great um, store by... Fidelity, because yeah. I think the main thing is to have uh, a soulmate, an intellectual partner, someone who you feel comfortable with as a person in their brain and physically, you know, we, I think it's overrated. And, you know, certainly during marriages, I found it quite hard to be 
phase four. There was a period in my life where I had back burn them in, front burn them in, and whatever. <laughs> one in the fridge. I've never had one in the fridge. I've never had before. This woman auctioning her virginity, I think that there is an attitude now amongst a lot of young women who would say they're a feminist, that they own their virginity and what they, how they use it and lose it and raise money is up to them. Yeah. And, and I she's, well, see she where says she's that. She says, I'm an independent woman. Excuse me, I think if you sell your body for money, that's prostitution, prostitution. isn't mm. it? Yeah. Well, no? she's probably saying she'll only do that... Once. Once, because it's you lose your virginity once. You she says actually, actually she says actually, why should I no. why should I wait any longer and lose my virginity to someone who could probably then go and break my heart later? But, but who, saying, Janet it... doesn't think that's prostitution. No, not if she does it once. And also I think there's <laughs> <laughs> She does it. She's got the money she needs to go to university. But I think there are uh, a lot of women at university, and probably men too, who are selling sex to pay for their studies. Yeah. They have got this whole sugar daddy mm. thing going on where they, you know, their attitude to sex is not my I generation. If you thought that got heated, wait until you watch these and click here to subscribe. You may as well. It's totally free.